Good feeding management throughout gestation is critical to maintain the sow in the ideal body condition to support optimal reproductive performance. The sow must be in the proper body condition at farrowing to deliver and nurse a healthy litter of piglets and to have a normal post weaning return to estrus and good subsequent reproductive success. The learning objectives of this video are to discuss the importance of managing sow feeding throughout gestation with emphasis on feeding sows to condition and to detail instructions for calibrating gestation feed drops in stall and pen housing. The time to begin thinking about how much to feed during pregnancy is before the sows are bred. There shouldn't be much variation in the body condition of replacement gilts, but substantial variation in body condition may be expected in sows at weaning. This figure, originally published in the U.S. Pork Center of Excellence's Pork Information Gateway, demonstrates using visual inspection and physical palpation of the hips and spine to score sows from emaciated to excessively obese. These are subjective measurements, so if more than one person is visually scoring sow body condition on a farm, it's important for these people to effectively communicate to ensure consistency. Alternatively, a sow body condition caliper, such as the one seen here, may be used to more objectively quantify sow body condition. The caliper is placed on the sow's back at the last rib, as shown in image B, and the handles of the caliper are then allowed to gently rest on the sow's back. The caliper uses the angle of the back to determine whether the sow is too thin, too fat, or at an ideal body condition. Sows that are in less than ideal body condition will have a decreased number of piglets born alive, reduced milking ability, and greater pre-weaning piglet mortality. Score sows at weaning and mark them with a letter or color to indicate whether the sow is in thin, ideal, or obese body condition, and then group sows together according to body condition in adjacent breeding stalls in the gestation barn. This allows better monitoring and management of body condition and can help prevent overconditioned sows from stealing extra feed provided to underconditioned sows. Score body condition again before mixing into group pens and group sows by body condition, size, and parity to ensure that feed intake remains consistent among pen mates. Determining exactly how much to feed sows throughout gestation depends mostly on the composition of the diet, but also on the environment and stage of gestation. Once a feeding regimen is established, maintaining accuracy in the amount of feed actually delivered to the sows is critical, and regular maintenance and upkeep of the feeding system is required. Let's say, for example, that we have a sow on a program to consume four pounds of feed in gestation, but for some reason, the feeder is only providing her three and two-thirds pounds per day. One-third of a pound of feed isn't very much and may not be immediately visible to the naked eye. But let's say the sow was maintained on this feeder every day of her 114-day pregnancy. By the time she farrows, she will have consumed almost 40 pounds less feed than intended, and this may have consequences for piglet birth weight and sow milking ability, among other things. But what if the trend is reversed, and instead of underfeeding, we're actually overfeeding by 40 pounds during pregnancy? Now the sow may be overconditioned at farrowing, which may increase the number of stillborn pigs, decrease milking ability, and impair the sow's lactation feed intake, not to mention the cost associated with the extra feed. Multiplied across an entire farm, it's easy to see how incorrectly calibrated feeding systems can become a serious and unnecessary expense. The density of the feed, the angle of the feed drop from the feed line, and wear and tear on the machinery over time will all contribute to inaccuracies. Even the type of feed drop may impact accuracy. Recalibrating feed drops is relatively simple. Zero a bucket on a scale, collect the feed from the drop, and then weigh it. This feeder was set at 6 pounds, but only delivered 5.8 pounds of feed. Note that this is a decimal point and not pounds plus ounces. Record both the desired amount of feed to be delivered and the actual amount of feed that was delivered, and then repeat this process on at least 10 feed drops. This table shows the actual amount of feed collected from 10 feed drops that were set to deliver 6 pounds of feed. The total amount of feed desired was 60 pounds, but the actual amount received was only 57.7 pounds. We can use these two values to find where we should set the feeding level for the other feed drops in the barn. First, we'll calculate the differential, which is the actual amount of feed received divided by the desired amount of feed. In this case, 57.7 pounds of feed actually delivered divided by 60 pounds of feed expected equals 0 0.962. Next, divide the desired amount of feed to be delivered from each drop by the differential calculated in step 1. This calculates the new feeding level. 6 pounds of feed divided by 0 0.962 equals 6.2 pounds. 
This is the feeding level where we should set the remainder of the feed drops in the barn to ensure that sows are receiving the right amount of feed. This needs to be done weekly, and every time diets are reformulated. When doing this, it's also a good idea to check the tightness of the chains that support the feed lines. Loose feed chains create sags in the feed line that may cause feed spills and increase feed waste. In summary, reproductive output is maximized when sows are fed at the appropriate level to maintain ideal body condition. The best times to body condition score sows are at weaning and before mix into group pens. And finally, remember to calibrate feeders weekly and every time major changes to the diet are made to ensure accuracy of the feeding system.